Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. This video, this is Thanksgiving week and I took the entire week off and I spent most of that time in the garage working on the rear portion of the frame here for Ratchet. Now this video is going to be a little bit weird because it's not going to be so much start to finish of a certain aspect of the chassis. Because for me, chassis work, when I'm not working off of a design, the stuff that I did here, I did not lay out in Bentec because um, it was too unique and I had to build it around the fuel cell, around the transaxle, and around the engine. So I just did it piece by piece, making it up as I went along. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through everything that I've done so far because there's a lot of things that I did a certain way. A little bit differently than I did from Mahler and I want you guys to see what I did and why I did it because it might help you with your builds so what I'm going to do right now is just take you for some of the some of the tubing work I was bringing the camera around and filming some of it not a lot of it because it's it's such time-consuming meticulous work it's really hard for me to film that as I'm doing it but I'm gonna run you through some of that and then when we come back to here I'm just going to walk you through everything that I did this past week and why I did it. All right, now I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing some inch and a half by 095 ERW. A lot of the upper metal on this chassis has been ERW, but stuff on the bottom is DOM. And it is cold in the garage right now, so usually I'll throw some heat at both ends, blow it up the middle of the tube, and you'd be surprised how kind of nice and warm that makes the whole tube. Makes it a lot easier to work with. And then I'm like really neurotic about cleaning these tubes up. I'm using Super Clean on this. Super Clean seems to do a really good job with cutting through the degreaser. Depending on where you get your, your tubing from, sometimes it's got a real thin oil on it. Sometimes the stuff I get is almost like a wax type grease on it. I, I don't know. It's always a little bit different. I found the Super Clean cuts through it pretty good and it almost kind of makes it smell a little bit nicer too because I've used a lot of different chemicals cleaning them up. But like you can see, I'll, I'll clean it several times to just get it crazy clean. I don't know why I get it so clean, but I always do. I scrub it down. Uh, yeah, there's the Super Clean that I was using on this. Now I'm showing you that the piece I'm going to be trying to lay out here is the piece that's going to go between those two bars and then it's going to kick up to the bar that goes down around the engine cage. And here's the dimensions for that. I've made, measured 18 inches between the tubes, roughly 12 inches out to the sides, and both of those kicks should be 28 degrees. And the overall length will be 42 inches. Now this is that tube that I just neurotically cleaned up. And I'm setting it up in the bandsaw and I'm cutting it at 42 inches. Now I'm laying it out on the bench. First thing I'm doing is marking center. Whenever I make stuff like this, I mark my center and then I work out from center in either direction. This way on my die, it's, it forms it equally on both sides. And now marking my marks, I need to mark these 360 degrees. So I've got this little flexible tape that you just wrap around and it makes a really nice, real accurate line all the way around. And now you can see here when I slide the tube in there, being the fact that that mark I just made goes around 360 degrees, you can rotate the tube whichever direction you want and then you've got that marked right where you need it to be. Now I've, I marked this at 28 degrees but actually what I'm doing here is this ERW has got about 2 degrees of bend back so I'm actually bending this to 30 degrees and then at 30 degrees when it bounces back it should be at about 28 degrees. And this is me, I just brought it down and tested it, found out that it's, it's no good, that's not going to fit. So that was just my theatrics showing you that it doesn't work. This is now a new piece, I've laid it back out and I've moved this point about three inches more in 
uh, because the radius point on the other piece was was no good. That wasn't going to work at all. So now this is the same dimensions, but just with the radius point moved in three inches on either side. So I'll bend this up and see how it goes. Now I've got the piece mocked up in place with some magnets just so that I can see how it's fitting and at these edges here I'll need to measure my degrees and mark where I need to make the cut. So here I am measuring how many degrees I need to set my tubing notcher up at. Once I get that, it was six degrees. Then with my Sharpie there, I'm just marking where I need to cut it. And a lot of this stuff is just eyeballing it. And now I'm just making that notch at the six degrees. And in that little spray bottle, I've just got WE-40. That's what I use for my cutting fluid. So this piece here is that piece that you just saw me working on. It's it's the last piece that I've done out here. And the the final product that I have here, I'm real happy with. But the part that I guess I didn't foresee is I had to I had to do cuts right here on both sides there in order to get it in there because the way these tubes are coming this way and they're notched, and the way the rear cage here tapers in. You can't actually cut that piece for the proper length and fit it in there. And I originally was trying to just make some pretty heavy notches so that I could kind of slip it in there, but the notches were too big and it, it was too it was too ugly. And the, you, you're going to be able to see this part a little bit. I wanted it to look good, and because it's so short, it's only 12 inches, and the only thing that it's really doing is just kind of centering this piece with this piece so it's not under an incredible amount of stress so I was I, I guess justifying to myself why it's okay I don't like to do butt cuts like this but every once in a while you have to so I have one there if you look around there's others on here here's one on the rear portion here you you can see there's actually a smaller piece inside there and I've got rosette welds here there's another rosette weld on the bottom I usually try to hide the rosette welds but like when I made that rear piece, I couldn't, I'm not, let me just say I'm not talented enough to make that one entire piece. So I actually made it three pieces. It's this piece, it's this piece, and then this is the third piece. And then I made butt welds here. And my plan is when I make the rear portion of the cage, it will wrap up and actually tie into here to give it some more strength. But regardless, I ended up doing that on this piece as well. And I'm not going any farther with this piece because there's two things that this might be in the way of. I don't have the starter yet, and the starter is going to go right here. And I, may, I need to make sure that it's not going to interfere with this bar. So I need to, I need to get my starter ordered. And I'm smack dab in the middle of setting up the rear suspension, and I've got this one of the rear shock absorbers taped into roughly what I think will be the position. I haven't calculated that yet, but clearances is going to be pretty tight down here. You know, I'm going to have coil springs on here, and this shock absorber is going to be traveling back and forth as it goes through its motion. So I need to make sure that this allows enough clearance for that shock absorber to move back and forth. So this is very lightly tacked in right now. There's only one tack here, one there, one there, and one on the other side. So I, if I need to pop that out and make some changes to it, I can I can do that. Actually, everything in here right now is very lightly tacked in in case I need to make any changes. But let me, uh, I'm rambling here. Let me start at the beginning. The first thing I did earlier this week was I installed this hoop that goes around the fuel cell. The fuel cell, on Ratchet here, I wanted to go with a legit fuel cell. So I ordered this fuel cell, this fuel safe fuel cell. And this has the bladder in it, and it's got the foam, and it's got the baffles at the filler neck, and it's got the vent. And I'll, I'll be confident when I'm running around with this fuel cell that I'm not at real high risk. 
But regardless, I wanted to have a nice secure area for it to be mounted. Now this fuel cell is only eight gallons. Now I'm sure as soon as I said it was eight gallons, a lot of you guys said, wow, that is way too small. Like most Bajas like this are usually running around a 20 gallon fuel cell. But a couple of things you need to consider. Number one, for what my intentions are with Ratchet here, I shouldn't need 20 gallons of gasoline. Ratchet is being designed for off-road parks and smaller off-road events, like uh, Jump Champs, maybe. Or uh, right now, Blake Wilkie is building a little off-road park. These are the kind of venues that I'd like to do with Ratchet, if possible. For something like that, he doesn't need 20 gallons of gasoline. And like Mahler has a nine gallon, a nine gallon fuel cell that I made. And that fuel cell, I mean, he's just running, he's running a smaller engine, but that fuel cell will go a couple hundred miles. So I wanted to go with a small fuel cell because a, a smaller fuel cell, if I only need, let's say five gallons for an event, a smaller fuel cell will work better and is safer than a, a 20 gallon fuel cell of the same design because I'll just be carrying a bunch of extra fuel that I don't need. Now, if I find myself on, let's say, a poker run, maybe I'm on a poker run that's a couple hundred miles and I need more fuel, well, it'll be no big deal for me to make a couple of um, like bolt-on or strap-on auxiliary fuel cells, and then when I burn up the eight gallons, I can just pull over. It's, it's a poker run, so it's not like it's a race or anything, and just pour in the extra gas. So when I thought about it, I would rather be on the small side and have a nice small safe fuel cell that doesn't take up a lot of space and then if I need extra fuel for some sort of event just pour that in as I need it. So obviously two large advantages of having a smaller fuel cell is number one it doesn't cost as much but number two it takes up a lot less space. So I've got it positioned back here and I've designed this around the fuel cell that will that's where the fuel cell will live I still need to make tabs that will actually hold it in place but this is where it'll live and the way I'm trying to design this, if you look, I've got a flat, like a flat platform here that goes all the way back. And it rests up against the mostly flat wall that's right here. This flat wall, which goes all the way up to the roll bar, all the way down to the ground, and it will have a bar going from here down to the chassis once I figure out exactly where the, the shift rod is gonna go. So this will be a complete wall that goes from the, the the top to the bottom, from the left to the right. So it's a very safe, secure wall. And you've got the driver and the passenger right on the other side of this wall. But the rear here is going to have the engine, the transaxle, all the suspension components, and I'm going to be running shock absorbers, or they're, they're really coil carriers, and I'm going to have bypass shocks that are next to it in the rear. And it's got the fuel cell, and it'll have the electrical and way more happening back here than up in the front. So what I want to do here is I've got this flat area, which is going to run back, and it's I'm going to be making a triangulated section here so that this whole section that runs through here keeps the fuel cell, the transaxle, and the engine incredibly secure so that nothing can flex or twist within reason. I know it's going to flex and twist a little bit, but I'm going to try to put cross bracing everywhere so that everything is nice and rigidly tied in. And then of course, the rear suspension has to tie into this all well. It, the rear suspension has to tie into all this as well. So what I've got going on is, obviously I've got the fuel cell portion. I've got this square here, which might be hard to visualize this now, but this is going to have a structure coming up that the coil carrier and then over here the bypass shock are going to tie into. So it'll kind of look like a shock tower that you would see on the front end of an A-arm vehicle, but it's going to have the two shocks. It's going to come up. I think it'll have something that ties in to the roll bar over there. I think the radiator is going to lean up against it, and then I believe it will have some kicker tubes that come from here and tie into the, the roll bar up here. So it's gonna be obviously very strong and well-built structure because 
it's going to be carrying the shock absorbers, which basically means it's carrying the rear portion of the chassis. So that's what this basically square right here for is for, is for me to build up the, the shock absorber portion off of that. And then what I'm trying to do back here, first of all, I designed the top portion of the rear cage. I'm, uh, I'm really pretty happy with how that turned out. It, it slopes down. Some of you might be worried that the engine hangs out above it here and in a rollover. Possibly the engine could take some damage, but I'm really, I really don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue. Because if you go from that bar to this bar, I don't know. It couldn't take too much damage. And I'll be honest with you, I really like the way it looks. So I'm gonna be running that. I don't know how much you can see the back end, but I'm still yet to design. I have to design a portion that's gonna come out here. It's gonna come out, turn, come down. This is where the engine mounts are gonna come off of. And then it's gonna kick up a little bit, kick up more. I think it's gonna come out further than the back of this a little bit and then come back in and it'll have some sort of arcs in there just for aesthetics. And then that is going to be cross braced in. I'm gonna to try, to, to try to tie this into this piece with some cross bracing. I'm not completely sure. I need to get some tape out and draw up some ideas on that. But one thing that I'm trying to do, I'm not 100% sure if this will work, but I'm trying to allow enough space behind the engine so that when I remove the engine, there will be no portion of the rear cage that comes off. So if you look at Mahler, his rear cage, first of all, doesn't have any triangulation on it. So there's, there's really not much support coming off of this rear cage. That's why he's got the the triangulated engine mounts so that they're not floating around because this engine cage doesn't offer it any support. I don't want to have to do that on, on Ratchet. So on Mahler here, when you remove the engine, this portion bolts off and it comes off and then you have just the engine hanging there and you pull it off. But I do not want to do that on Ratchet if I don't have to because I want to be able to triangulate the rear engine cage in with the chassis so that it's all one solid piece. What I want to do, because I, as I was looking at this, I realized the engine is tucked a little bit behind the body, but this is a fiberglass body. So it's actually quite easy, if you pop off the body mounts, to just take the roof up and slide it forward a little bit. When I do that, then it's open straight up from the engine. And I think if I allow myself enough room, I'll just be able to hook up to the engine, pull it back, and then just pick it straight out. And then all of this stuff can be rigid mounted. I won't have any points where you have to unbolt it and take this rear cage off. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do at this, at this point. And I think I have already left enough room. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, I'm, I'm kind of winging that, but that's my plan back here. And then another thing that I did differently is if we come back to Mahler, I built the, roar, the rear portion of the cage for Mahler really close to the engine. Like so close that, believe it or not, you can still get this coil pack out and you can still get the oil cap off, but it's really, really close. Getting the valve cover off is really difficult. It does all work, but you know, working down here on a thermostat, it's all real tight and it's, it's a little bit frustrating. Also, with as close as that is back there, it's really hard to get the chain back there to pick this up and to pull it out. And that seems unnecessary. Had I, you know, using hindsight, I would have moved this tube back a little bit farther to give me some clearance back there. So with that thought in mind, you can see that this tube here, I've pushed back as far as I can, remembering that I need to allow space back here for the, uh, the coilover to have clearance. So I pushed it back as far as I could without hopefully without interfering with that but in doing so I'm like four to five inches off the back of the engine so when I need to get back here to work on my uh, coolant hoses or to work on the heads or to unbolt it from the transaxle there's a lot of room back here to do all this stuff 
And it doesn't look like it's hanging out there like a sore thumb, but I've, I've done what I can to tuck this stuff back as much as possible so that when it does come time to do work on this or to make repairs, it won't be as cumbersome to get to. All right, so looking at that, I don't know if that makes much sense. And that's <laughs> that's that's just a first draft. Um, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to triangulate this section to a certain point. I'm trying to run bars down. There's a transmission mount right here, so I'd like something tying that in. There's a serious transmission mount here, so I'd like something to tie that in. I also have to keep in mind that right about here, is going to be the upper link for the rear suspension. So I'll need to build some sort of a structure to tie this in. And then obviously I'm gonna have this piece coming out here, turning in here, that's gonna have an engine mount on it. So that is very important. So, you know, I'm obviously trying to get some sort of triangulation going in here, but I think what I need to do at this point, I need to build this piece that comes out so that I can uh, further clarify where I'm gonna have my triangulation coming into here. So that'll be it for this video guys. It's it's a solid week's worth of work. The tubing portion for me is a real slow process, especially when I don't have it designed out first. I did want to show you guys what I have gotten done so far so that in the next video you don't see massive changes and think that I'm trying to do stuff without showing you. Um, everything that I have in here so far, I'm really happy with. There's a couple things I need to get. I need to get my starter so that I know that I've left myself enough room up here. I have to do that. Maybe I'll try to order that later on today. And I have a alternator relocation kit that I ordered so that my alternator goes here instead of up here. I need to get that and get the alternator mounted so that when I make my structure coming out here and the cross bracing, I know that I'm leaving myself enough room for the alternator. So there's a couple things that I need to get there. But in the meantime, I also need to start doing some thinking and where I'm going to mount this piece. And I do have my bypass shocks ordered. So when those come in, I can mock those up on the other side and, and get a little bit more ideas of how much clearance I'm gonna have. So there's a lot of things coming together. There's a lot of things that need to fit together back here. And most importantly, because I'm looking to push this chassis much, much harder than I pushed Mahler, I need to make sure that I have everything properly triangulated here. Other than that, that's it for this video, guys. I hope it's helping you with whatever you're working on, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.